One of the significant acclamations made by the followers of Jesus in the days following the resurrection is the phrase, I have seen the Lord. It is a significant affirmation that sits so sort of like similar to Christ is risen as an affirmation of faith. But it also says something else significantly important, and that is that the risen Jesus comes to us. Welcome. As we pause in this time of reflection, I greet you from Ngunnawal country and pay my respects to the first peoples and traditional custodians across this continent. I greet you affirming the affirmation of the church since its earliest time. Christ is risen. His spirit is with us. A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked in fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said it to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. When we hear this story, our tendency can be to divert our attention to the story of Thomas. This is most likely because of the whole tradition of the phrase doubting Thomas that has risen up in our society as a result of this story. As a result of this, the first appearance of Jesus to his disciples that was recounted in this story can come to be regarded almost as a prelude to the main story, the story of Thomas. But both parts of this story are important. Both parts of the appearance of Jesus are significant. In both, Jesus comes to his friends. Indeed, Rather, with regards to the second appearance, thinking of it in terms of Jesus coming to deal with Thomas's doubts, it is better to think of it as Jesus coming because the first time Thomas was not there and he missed out. And yes, there are the issues of doubt, but Thomas wasn't the only one. After all, the disciples were hiding behind closed doors because they were afraid. They had heard the announcement of the resurrection, but still doubts and fears prevailed. And here is the comfort, therefore, of the story. To this fearful bunch who really had pulled up short on the night of Jesus' arrest, to them, Jesus comes, comes with the assurance of his continued love, come to reveal the truth of the resurrection 
and also to affirm their calling to continue on as people in the story of God's transforming love. We celebrate the resurrection, but there is so much that can give us pause. Our own failings, where we have stumbled, our, our hesitancy in the face of the huge painful realities of our world that confront us, and our doubts and questions that we ourselves hold regarding that which we say we believe. Jesus comes to us in the midst of our frailties, our fears, our uncertainties, our doubts with love. Jesus comes to assure us, encourage us and strengthen us. We may not see nor touch Jesus the way it is described in these stories, but to us the Spirit has been given. To us Jesus comes. It is okay to be unsure. However, be assured you are not abandoned. For in the kindness of friend and stranger, in the words of the scripture, in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the drink, in the gentle touch of the spirit who breathes life within, Jesus comes and is with us. Amen. Let's pray. God of life, when the risen Christ appeared to his disciples gathered in the closed room, he breathed on them saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. God, we pray for the breath of your Spirit to bring life through our world. Life to those trapped in fear and despair of the violence that swells around and which has already taken so much from them. Life to a planet trapped under the burden of excessive human waste. Life to those trapped by their doubts, fears, struggles and the burdens, labels, 
that others would lay upon them. Life to ourselves as we seek to live this risen life Christ calls us to. That the flourishing, fairness and cherishing which Jesus spoke of as hallmarks of your commonwealth of peace and the renewal of all creation announced by the empty tomb may burst into being in our world and in our lives. Amen. Christ is risen. His spirit is with us. In the resurrection of Jesus, our hopes are born anew. Live generously and courageously that the light of God's love may shine in you and know that God who called Jesus from the grave and who gives you new life as the reconciled people of God is with you and blesses you now and always. Amen. <laughs>